Right, well today we're gonna have a go at aqua blasting this 432 armored personnel carrier. It is very, very scabby. Many, many, many layers of paint all over the place. We're gonna use the applied concepts aqua blasting machine that we did the T34 with. So I'm gonna fill it up with sand. Well, it's not sand, it's crushed glass. Fire up the compressor. And I haven't used this for a thing for, well, literally months. We'll see if it works without any trouble. That'll be interesting. Most sandblasters are a real pain in the arse when they've been off for a while. He just made it dark up there. It's a nice clean machine. Right, so I've chuck some sand in. You always get like this weird fluff that's in, uh, in with this crushed glass. Uh, so it's quite good that it's got this little filter thing to sieve that out. So of course this is aqua blasting, if you haven't seen this before. Dry blasting, normally you'd have to have that big helmet on and cover yourself up and look like a spaceman. But with this you don't need to. All you literally need is some pretty basic gloves. You can actually blast without gloves. It just, because of the water, it dampens. Obviously when the, when the abrasive hits the metal and bounces back and it hits you, because it's dampened with water, it hardly hurts. Whereas if you did that dry blasting, it would soon cut into your skin and cause serious damage. But with this, it's a lot safer system in regards to that. So it does mean that you don't have to wear the big full body suit face mask thing. You can just get away with literally a face shield like what you'd grind with. Um, but I prefer something because it just like this, it just, it just stops little particles getting in your face a little bit better. Um, obviously you do need you do need to have eye protection because those little bits can hit you, but it won't hurt. Not like uh, not like dry blast blasting. That would be lethal. And of course, because it's firing, it doesn't mix the water in the pot. It only the only time the water mixes with the abrasive is right here at the very end. So you don't have trouble like with other blasting machines, wet blasters. But they actually put the water in the pot. That seems like a bit of a disaster to me. It makes stuff block up. This, you don't have any of that trouble. And it just comes out the end and suppresses it right at the very end so you don't get any block, block ups, which is quite handy. So, obviously the other thing that you'll be wondering is, well, if you're spraying water on it, it's gonna go rusty straight away. Well, you put this additive in, and I'm afraid the, the things fell off, but you get that from Applied's website. And I use a thousand liters of water, just run it off an IBC. I put about half a can in that with a thousand liters. A thousand liters of water will do a whole day's worth of blasting easily, if not a bit more. Um, and you can leave what you've blasted up to five days without putting primer on with that, uh, with that stuff. And that is apparently environmentally safe. So if it does go into the water courses, that ain't gonna kill anything as well. So that's a special additive to stop it flash rusting. Right, all that said, I'm gonna set the camera up on a tripod. I'm gonna put my personal protective equipment on.
So as you see, it's pretty quick. Let me just wipe your lens there. You got a bit of, you got a bit of splatter on you. There we go. Yeah. So another thing you can do. Obviously that, that probably took, I don't know, a couple of minutes. Not very long at all. That same square would have took easily three hours with a with a needle gun. Uh, especially tin work. So as you see, I flashed over some tin work there with a needle gun because tin's thin, it vibrates, and that sort of loses the efficiency of a needle gun. So needle gun in tin work is, people that's got it, is horrendous, very loud, terrible on the ears. This isn't actually that noisy. You can put the compressor out of the way. And obviously the other beauty of doing this is it's almost like power washing. You don't actually, uh, you don't actually think of it as blasting, you just think about it power washing. You get a little bit damp, uh, and you've got to think that if you shoot into a gap like that, it will fire back in your face and cover your goggles in uh, sludge. So you need to just think about it a bit like that, just like power washing really, except you're knocking the paint off. What you can do as well, I'm going to press the button on the machine, I can I can knock the abrasive off and then use it as like a, oh, as, well as a jet wash, so I can knock off what I've done to see if I've missed any areas, so I'll do that now. using it as a power washer. Let's show you what we've done. See, it's very nice and easy. If you're very careful, and you can go around the glass without hitting it, if you do hit the glass, it will put a shade on it. You know, it will, uh, it will upset it. But obviously this is tin. People that have needle gun in the past will appreciate how long just that piece would have took and we literally flashed over it. The blacking in the steel, you can go more. It depends what sort of job you want. If you want to spend longer on it, you'll knock all that blacking off. That's just the quality of the steel coming out. Here, this, this piece is actually, this thin cover is, as you can see, absolutely knackered, really. It wants re-skinning, but still, it's taking it back to bare steel. If I flash over there, I'll get rid of that. A few bits there I've missed. Might go and get a set of steps in a minute, just so I'm a bit higher. And I'll knock that rest off now complicated things like that to get around aren't a problem with it as you can see so I should fly over this back end We've done all that side on like, I hadn't run out of abrasive either. No, it's quite economical, isn't it? Yeah. It just looks like you've used a lot of sand. 
but there's not even really any dust on the vehicles that are next to it. And it's quite windy today. Mmm, sibby, sibby, sibby. Hate to think how long that would have took with a needle gun. Shows a bit of detail. So we just changed over and put a, a bigger head on it. This is the head I've been using. And now we've put a, the biggest one we can get. We've seen what difference it makes. So this is the Venturi system where it actually sucks the water. Uh, the pipe goes in there. So there's no water in the system until it gets to there and the Venturi pulls the water out the IBC, up the pipe, through the machine and to the end of the gun. So there's no pump or anything complicated, it's just simple stuff. Let me just think how long that would have took Jack to need a gun. We've literally done it in about six minutes flat. And if you're wondering how much mess it is on surrounding vehicles, I mean this is literally feet away. And this only tiny bit of sand here is just where I manoeuvred and chopped the gun in the air. Otherwise there wouldn't be any on it at all. And this is right next to it. So you don't get too much mess all over everything in your entire yard. It all stays in a very small area. Obviously depending on wind. It's time to say goodbye to the Stollies. The lorry's turned up to pick them up. I'm going to try and drive this one on and then use the old identifiers as a phone and to put that one on afterwards. Is that running?
Well, that went on all right. It was, I needed both hands to guide him, so sorry I didn't film all that, but it actually went on pretty well. Nice bit lift. Oh no! Oh it! It's probably in gear! Oh! The old brake was a little bit seized on. She's away now. Heavy on bus! Fuel everywhere. She's tiptoeing. Really good driving. Things you can do with a JCB telehandler are unreal. Turns out the chapter on the lorry is a subscriber. What a bloke. Little bit more! I'll go and get the Lindy, put the other wheels under there, and we should be good to go. Ruddy, windy, ruddy, windy, horrible day today. Good day for getting rid of old stollies. Normally chain anything down. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lift her up outside this one there. Jackson. I don't think it's changed in use too often. No, no, that's, that's normal mid lift practice. <laughs> ben, he wants a tag axle unit. <laughs> Loaded up. Just gonna go get the V5 document. The driver is. Okay. Here he is. Look, trucker Tim. No, it's trucker Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to fall, that's quite a way up there. <laughs> Right, mid lift is all loaded up. Mid lift has left his leg down though, so I was going to sort that out. Farewell, Stollies.
some of you keep asking how we're getting on with the T34, and we probably haven't made it very clear, but because we've got this new project uh, with the Tank Museum with the FV4005, we've put the T34 into storage, or we've shelved it for a minute, we've put it in the shed, because we only have so much time to get the FV4005 done, and I don't want to rush the T34, I want to make a job of it, so, uh, so we've put that to one side, we are gathering parts that we haven't got for it, while we do that anyway, so it's not a bad thing. But yeah, we'll definitely be doing some more on it very, very soon. Because I'm hoping to have the hull driving um, quite soon. I know it hasn't even been painted yet, it's got nothing in. But stuff will happen fairly soon. Which means, the sooner we do that, the sooner we can get back to working on this. But I've had to leave Adam sandblasting. Because I've got to go and see something that I've bought that we don't, we don't need. That might be coming next Wednesday. One other thing I'd like to know is what adverts actually come up on everyone's screen. It's something that's weird, but I'd love to know. So let us know what adverts come up when you're watching our channel, just so I know what what people are paying me to advertise, which I don't even know I'm advertising. It's just, just for me to know, really. So thank you all for watching, and we'll see you again. It was all right, Joe. Thank you.